Okay guys, only one chapter left of Clementine. Chapter 10, and this is how it starts with this picture. The last thing that happened is that we knew that Clementine's parents were about to have a party and that they invited Margaret. And Clementine said she could only think of two reasons to have a party. One would be if it was a surprise party, and the other would be if it was a going away party. Which one do you think Clementine thinks is gonna happen? I raced back to my apartment. My parents were in their bedroom. That's right, a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting, my mom was saying. Goodbye and good riddance. Should be in red icing. Make sure they spell her name right, I heard my dad say. And then my mom spelled Clementine and said she'd be over to pick it up soon. There wasn't much time. Well, I guess I'll go clean my room, I said. I said it really loud as I walked through the living room. I tried to make it sound as if those words were used to coming out of my mouth. Yep. I'll just be cleaning like crazy all afternoon, I said. My dad came out and he squinted at me and then sat down to read his newspaper. My mother just glanced at me as she passed by to help my brother with his puzzle. Maybe when I'm done, I'll clean Radish's room too, I said. And then I'll do my homework. And if you need help with anything else or like solve any more problems like I did with the pigeons, uh, just come and get me. I'm available. I'm okay, Clementine, my parents said. They didn't even look at this look up this time, so it was probably too late. Just in case it wasn't, I got the spray bottle of cleaner and some paper towels because even though I've never actually cleaned my room, I know what people do and I know what their supplies are. Except for I didn't really know what to do next once I got the supplies. I wanted my room to look like Margaret's, like a magazine picture, but I didn't know how to do it. The problem was everything already looked really good to me. Luckily, I knew what my parents would like me to clean, so I dragged out everything from the black hole and I piled it all on top of my bed. And you would not believe how much stuff I had in there. Four shoes, three brushes, two mini clips to count for my hair, socks, a really crunchy Easter peep, ew, and the top hat that had been missing from the Monopoly game for two years, a Mr. Potato Head nose, three library books, my book report due last Monday, and Friday's Saturday sentences. Some more socks, a Halloween mask, the skirt. Whoa, it's still talking, but look at that. All that stuff was under a bed. How in the world did it fit there? It's a lot of stuff. Two flashlights, a mitten, a green plastic trapezoid, a taking it easy in the Everglades snow globe, half a button, polka dotty's favorite rubber mouse, mom's yoga video, and dad's needle nose pliers. There was even 45 cents and more socks. I got the things all piled up on my bed and even though they looked fine to me, I started to clean them. I squirted everything with lots of cleaner and I rubbed them all really hard with paper towels. And I squirted and I rubbed those things all afternoon until it started to get dark outside. But nothing ever got any cleaner. Everything just got wetter and wetter and covered with clumps of wet paper towel. Suddenly my eyes were crying and they just wouldn't stop. And that's exactly when my parents came in. I just got some cleaner in my eyes. That's what's going on, I said. I'm doing really great cleaning my room and I'll be fine all by myself. Okay, fine, I said, wiping away the tears. I'm sorry, I won't be like this anymore. Like what, Clementine, my mom said, what are you talking about? Like whatever you don't want. I won't talk too much and I'll clean up my room for real and I will think about the consequences before I do stuff and I won't do stuff anyway and I'll never lose my homework because I'll never lose anything and I'll sit still all the time every time so one day he'll be like hey is that Clementine or is that a statue and I'll never bring another note home from school that says Clementine had a difficult day today and I'll bring hundreds of notes home that say wow Clementine certainly knows how to pay attention and the underneath of my bed will look like the underneath of normal people's bed. And my hands will always be where they belong. And I will take piano lessons again. But this time I'll actually sit on the bench the whole time. And that's exactly when I ran out of air when talking. And I took a great big gulp. And I won't be like me anymore. I'll be an easy one. I'll be just like celery. And you don't have to get rid of me. Which I know because I heard you say, one's all we need. And then I heard you say, goodbye and good riddance, Clementine. My parents both ran over to me and hugged me at the same time. It was like a huge hug sandwich. And then they took my hands and they brought me out to the dining room. Here they are. And there was Margaret and her mother and Mitchell with my brother on his shoulders. And all of them were looking at me. And I scrubbed my face to make sure there weren't any tears left. And even though I did not care what Mitchell thought, because he is not my boyfriend, 
my brother yelled, prize, and everybody else yelled, surprise, and then they stepped out of the way so that I could see the dining room table, and on it was a cake, all right, but it didn't say goodbye and good riddance, Clementine, but it did say goodbye and good riddance of a, above about a thousand frosting pigeons, and then underneath it, it said, thank you, Clementine, hero of the great pigeon war. Oh, well, what was that one's all we need situation? What about that? My mom and dad smiled really, really big. Right, wait right there, sport, dad said. He went into the hall and he came back with a big box. Open it up. And so I did. Do you know what was in there? A kitten. I'm not even kidding you. A real live kitten. There was only one left, dad said, and we told them one's all we need. I lifted the kitten out of the box and I took him into the bathroom to get him a name <laughs> right away. I found the most exquisite word I'd ever seen in my life. I held him up to my cheek and I told him his name and he started to purr, which filled up a space in my ears that had been empty ever since Polka died. There's her new kitty. When I came back out, I saw Margaret wanting to touch my kitten. And I saw her tell her hands to be quiet about that because he was mine and he was new. And I wanted to say the rule is no touching my kitten ever, but I didn't say it. Instead, my mouth opened up and I said, would you like to pet moisturizer, Margaret? Which was a very big surprise, let me tell you. We know it's not the same as having Polka Daddy back, my mom said. He's different, my dad said. I know, I told him, because he's perfect. Then I looked up and I saw that everything else was perfect too. My mom was in her overalls, my comedian father, my brother who didn't get stuck with a fruit name, Margaret in her Margaret hat, Mitchell slicing the Clementine the Hero cake, and my not from a magazine apartment. Look at them all. Can you tell who's who in here? When Margaret's mother came over and said, Tomorrow after school, I'm taking both of you girls to my hairdresser to fix up those haircuts. I almost said no thanks, but I didn't want to change a single thing. But she was smiling at me, and that looked perfect too. So I smiled back and said thank you. And then I passed out the cake, and I was extremely polite because I served everyone else a slice first. And then at the very end, I took a slice. Okay, I took two. Fine. The end. Here's Clementine. Clementine is a fourth grade reading level. It's a book that has several different chapters or books to it so that if you want to read more, you can. And again, remember Clementine, I like it so much because it reminds me a lot of you. It's about a really busy, really silly little girl and we get to hear all of her thoughts, what she's doing with all the different things that are happening in her life and all about her relationships. At the beginning of the book, she was feeling kind of sad about some of her relationships, wasn't she? And toward the end, she's just as happy as can be. All right, guys, I will let you know what the next chapter book is on Monday. Bye-bye.